So today we're looking at the analysis of two categorical variables. We're going to start with how it's displayed. So when you talk about two categorical variables, it's bivariate data, meaning that you have two measurements collected on one person. So here we have smoking status and divorce status. So each person would respond yes or no to smoking and then yes or no to divorce status. That information is then displayed in what's called a contingency table, which is what you see here. Sometimes a contingency table is called a two-way table, meaning that two variables are being displayed. Within a contingency table, each cell will represent a unique combination between the two variables. So this cell here is people who say yes, they smoke, and yes, they've been divorced. Here is yes, they smoke, no, they haven't been divorced. These are people who do not smoke but have been divorced, and then finally, people who do not smoke and have not been divorced. So a contingency table displays two separate variables and then people's unique responses to those variables. Now, when you have a contingency table or you have bivariate data, it tends to be the case that you have the opportunity to have an explanatory variable and a response variable. Remember that explanatory variables are going to partially explain the response variable. And when you have a contingency table, the explanatory variables are best represented in the rows of the contingency table, and then the response variable is represented in the columns of a contingency table. So this particular table, because it's already set up for us, it seems to be that smoking is going to be the explanatory variable, which is explaining the response variable, um, have you ever been divorced? So then within each cell, you have different counts that are represented. The counts that are shown here are observed counts. So cells that have counts already shown are called observed counts. And then within each cell, you can calculate a row or column percent. So row percents are based on the total number of observations in the row. So you take the observed count, that will always be your numerator for the cells, and then you will divide by the corresponding row or column total. So this one, we have 238 divided by 485, which is the total for the row. And this would give me a row percent of 49%. When you move then to calculate a column percent, it's going to base, be based on the total number of observations for the column. So our denominator for this cell would be 612. So 238 is the observed count. That will be the numerator divided by 612, which is the total for the column. So this would have a column percent equal to 39%. So again, if I were to move down to the cell, no smoker, but yes, having been divorced. I still have the same denominator for my column percent because I'm in the same column, but now my observed count is going to be 374. So I have 374 as my numerator divided by 612, which would give me a column percent of 61%. So this column should add up to 100%, which is true, 39 plus 61 gives me that 100%. However, here, because I'm looking at a brand new row, I will have the row total for this row. So 1184 is going to be my denominator, and 374 is still the numerator. So this comes out to be 32%. So again, this row percent, these should total to 100%. If I were to calculate it using division, I would have 810 divided by the total for the row, or 1184, which would come out to be 68%. I could have, however, because I know that this whole row has to add up to 100%, I could have taken 100 and subtracted the 32 to be able to find the 68% as well. So if we practice it one more time, the row percent for this no divorce but yes smoking, I'm going to use 247 as my numerator because that's the observed count that we're shown here. And then I divide that by 485. Again, this row should add up to 100% and we see that that's true with the 51%. Here, if I were to calculate my column percent, I have 247, so the same, but divided by 1057, which is my total for the column. 
So this comes out to be 23%. And then down here, all I have to do is take 100 minus what I already have represented up here, and I would find 77%. So those are just ways for you to be able to describe the explanatory or the response variable specifically by using row or column percents. And this is just the start of the analysis for two categorical variables.